Here's another problem. Our overall vector is W, which has a magnitude of 6. It's got an angle of 40 degrees uh, at this point. Here's our axes. Please try to break this vector into components. Remember, or maybe I haven't mentioned this before, but that's also called resolving a vector into components. We want to resolve this vector or break this vector into x and y components. Same type of problem that we've been doing lots of examples of. Break this vector into components, please. Did you start by writing down the positive directions? Please start by writing down the positive directions. That's a good habit for any problem. Okay, uh, we can use an asterisk to show this was the side we were given and this was the angle. Now we need to draw a right triangle that indicates the components. Well, again, we're not dealing with horizontal and vertical axes here. So we need legs that are parallel to these axes. Remember that the legs should be parallel to these axes and the overall vector should be the hypotenuse. Well, this dashed line here, I think it's pretty clear this dashed line is meant to be parallel to the x-axis. So we can draw one leg along the dashed line. Remember that dashed line was meant to be parallel to the x-axis. And then we're going to have to draw um, the y leg super great explanation of how to find the direction of the arrows on the legs. So let's try another approach here. Again, you might ask yourself, what is the initial and final point for the overall vector? What's the initial and final point for the overall vector? Well, the overall vector started here at this initial point and is pointing down here to this final point. We can kind of think that uh, these as the initial and final points for that overall vector. Okay, um, and then the components should give us an alternative path between the initial and final points. The components should allow us an, an alternative path from the initial to the final point. So if we follow along this line uh, in the direction of the arrow, we'll go from the initial to the final point. So we want to draw arrows that will help us get um, along the components from the initial to the final point. Well then, I don't want to put this arrow here because we're not going towards the initial point, we're going away from the initial point. I think maybe that's the, the best way to think about this. We're not going towards this point, the overall vector is going away from this point, so the component should also be pointing away from there. You can see that the overall vector is pointing away from this initial point. Well, then the, the x component should also be pointing away from that initial point. All right, how about the y vector? Well, um, this is the wrong arrow, because now the y vector is pointing away from the final point. But the y vector should be pointing towards the final point. We're going towards the final point. The components should be pointing away from the initial point and towards the final point. The components should be pointing away from the initial point and towards the final point. We can see here that this x vector is pointing away from the initial point. And now the y vector is pointing towards the final point. How do I know this was the initial and this was the final point? Because the overall vector is pointing away from this point and towards this point. It's not really a standard uh, terminology to call this the initial and this the final, but I think that helps us to think about uh, how to get the correct arrows on those components. That's really crucial because if we don't get the arrows right, we're not going to get the signs right. And if we're not going to get the signs right, why bother? Uh, you have to get the signs right just as much as the magnitudes. All right, and this is a right triangle, so I'll put it in this square. Just drawing the right triangle, I think, is a pretty tricky part of this type of problem for many students. Now we can call this the hypotenuse, this the adjacent side, and this the opposite side. Let's try to find the adjacent side using the information we have about the hypotenuse. And we know that to find the adjacent side, we use the cosine. Our angle here is 40. 
Remember, if you were in any doubt about this formula, you could start with the basic definition of so cosine from Sokotoa. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. We know from Sokotoa that the definition of cosine is that the cosine of the angle is the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. And if you simply cross multiply this equation, if you cross multiply this equation, you should get this equation here. So you're probably comfortable now not starting with the original definition of cosine, but starting with this equation for finding the adjacent side. But if you ever have any doubts or um, concerns, you can always go back to Sokotoa and use the original definition of cosine. And when you cross multiply, you will get this equation. Now for the adjacent side, the adjacent side we plug in w sub x, but since we're using the trig function here, we're not trying to find the signed component, but only its magnitude. Uh, trig functions only tell you lengths and magnitudes. Our hypotenuse here is 6. The overall vector form the hypotenuse. Now we can use our calculator. We're still just finding the magnitude, so we still include the dot. 6 times the cosine of 40 on our calculator is 4.6. This is a magnitude, so there's no point indicating a sign. Magnitudes are always positive. But we're not done until we figure out what w sub x is without the dot, the signed component. Well, here we use the arrows that we put on the components. We decided that w sub x was pointing down and right, but you can see that the positive direction is up and left. w sub x is pointing down and right, but our positive direction is up and left. Uh, so we're pointing anti-parallel to the positive direction, and w sub x would be negative. Let's build that into our sketch. Now we can try to figure out the opposite side. opposite side would involve the sign. And again, if you didn't remember this formula or you weren't confident of it, you could just go back to Sokotoa. The sine of the angle equals the opposite side over the hypotenuse. And when you cross multiply, you would get this equation. For the length of the opposite side, we should use w sub y with a dot indicating the magnitude. The hypotenuse has a length of 6. We're dealing with sine 40. We're still just trying to calculate the magnitude because we're just getting that answer from the trig function. So our calculator would give us 6 sine 40, which is approximately 3.9. As usual, we're not worried about significant figures uh, in these videos. We're just rounding things off to whatever feels okay. Now we have to figure out the sine component. So now I'm not going to put a dot on because I'm trying to explicitly figure out the sine. Well, we decided that w sub y is pointing down and to the left, but the positive y direction is up and to the right. w sub y is down and to the left, but the positive y direction is up and to the right. That means w sub y is anti-parallel to the positive direction, or it's in the negative direction. We can build that into the sketch. A couple things here that might be tricky for some people. One thing that's tricky is just drawing the right triangle. So keep practicing this problem until it's easy for you to draw the right triangle. One thing to remember is that the legs should be parallel to the axes. If you try to draw legs parallel to the axes, that will help you to draw the correct right triangle. Uh, remember that the vertical line here is actually the hypotenuse because it represents the overall vector. And the other tricky thing I think is um, getting the right arrows on the components. We have to get the right arrows on the components so we can get the right signs on the components. Um, so uh, I've struggled a little bit myself in the last couple of the examples to try to find a good way to explain um, how to figure out the arrows and the components. Uh, hopefully uh, some, hopefully um, at least one or two of the methods that I've mentioned have made sense to you, but make sure that you can uh, easily find what the directions are of the components if you know the overall vector.
Remember that if you didn't get this question right, or even if you just didn't get it right easily and systematically, before you go on, you should just redo this problem. Um, I don't always say that, but th that goes for every single problem in this video. Uh, what's the point of doing the next problem unless you've mastered the problem you're already working on? You should never go on to the next problem unless you've mastered the problem that you're working on and all the previous problems as well. Don't go on to new material until you've mastered old material.